So you've sent some funds and they never arrived. What are you going to do next? One of the most powerful yet accessible tools that you can use to understand what is going on with your wallet is a block explorer. They allow you to quickly see a lot more information than your wallet will typically show you, as well as being able to see information for other blockchains and tokens that your wallet may not support. So basically what I'm gonna do in this video is just run through how you can use some common block explorers to locate some funds uh, that might have gone missing, uh, to look quickly at some of the mistakes that people often make with block explorers, as well as just quickly touch on how how scammers uh, unfortunately often sometimes use block explorers to trick newbies as well. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So for this video, I've just set up a test wallet in Trust Wallet. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just go into the Ethereum address, we'll hit receive, and I'll just send some different coins there. Okay, so I've sent some Ethereum, some Binance pegged Ethereum, some HECO token, some FTM, some BNB, and some AVAX, all just to that Ethereum address. If I refresh there, in this instance, it's picked up both the Ethereum, the Binance pegged Ethereum, and the Smart Chain automatically. But the HECO token, the FTM, and the AVAX are missing. So let's find them. So what we'll do is we'll look this up on a block explorer. So we're just gonna head over to etherscan.io and then once we're there, we are going to take our wallet address and we are going to paste it in here. And if I hit search, we can then go back here and we see the same Ethereum balance here that we see in Trust Wallet. And you know, there might be a bit of a difference in terms of the uh, dollar value just based on the different counter values that they're using. But the thing that's important is the Ethereum balance is the same. Where this becomes extremely useful is that you'll notice in here, it actually says that I can view the address on one other chain. So if I click on that, it'll take me to blockscan.com and do a search for my wallet address from Trust Wallet. Now, because I only just did this transaction, block scan is a few minutes behind, uh, but we can already see it has found that there are transactions on my address on the Phantom chain. So if I just open that in a new tab and go here onto FTM scan, I can actually see that there is about just under 18 FTM sitting at my address, even though that address is not being displayed in Trust Wallet at all. So. To be able to see that, it's a simple case of going into the settings in Trust Wallet. If I just for FTM, turn on the FTM chain, and there we go. And you can see as soon as I do that, those funds have now are now visible in Trust Wallet as well. The other really powerful thing with these Etherscan based block explorers is you'll notice that while I'm sort of viewing uh, FTM scan, so that's viewing my address on the phantom blockchain so if i was using a wallet like metamask where i have to manually add these networks in rather than just turning on the chain uh, like i did in trust wallet i can just click on that button there and it will actually prompt me to add that network to metamask and i can basically just say approve and then switch network and there we can see that same ftm that has appeared just like before now, the funny thing here is it's actually been a few hours and BlockScan is still not showing the balance on uh, all of the chains, even though it is showing some of the transactions. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh, even if BlockScan isn't working, another great alternative is dbank.com and they've got a very similar thing where you can just paste your wallet address here and hit search and it will basically just show you the balance on a number of different chains. And that matches uh, what we have over here on Trust Wallet, and uh, but they're all represented all as a single interface, and we can you know filter by chain if we want to see the balance for a certain one. Uh, likewise, we can see transaction histories, NFTs, uh, and so on. Though the funny thing with this is, if we go into history and click on any of the transactions, uh, this will actually just take us back to EtherScan, BSC Scan, or whatever. So uh, yeah, dbank.com is definitely another good option if you're uh, trying to find some funds that are not where you expect them to be. And if you wanna be able to see the balance of your address across a range of different blockchains all at once. So I'll just really run through some of the stuff you can see on here. In addition to the balance and the token balance, we also have the list of transactions. 
Uh, those are just normal transactions for the native currency, as well as BEP20 transactions here. And I'll just quickly show you something where, that I see trip people up all the time. So if I go into the transaction screen and click on this TX hash here, you can see that it's actually quite straightforward. Um, it's from, uh, that's my tip address there, and it's to this demo wallet address that I'm using, and that's pretty much it. Um, there's really, you know, there's no, there's no input data, there's no real input data or anything like that that is used in this transaction. So in this case, this to address is my wallet address. However, if I go into BEP20 token transactions and click or any smart contract based transaction and click on the TX ID, you'll notice it has all this extra information and that this to address is actually a smart contract address, not my wallet address. Any funds that you send directly to a smart contract address are not recoverable. Likewise, let's say this transaction here was withdrawing funds from an exchange. You can't just go into that transaction and copy the from address and then send funds back there. It's really important you understand this. The address that your funds came from when you withdraw from an address is not the same as your deposit address for that exchange. If you send the funds back there, uh, they will probably be lost. The exchange might help you recover them. They might not. The key takeaway here is that every time you want to receive funds in your wallet, you need to make sure that you only ever copy that address from the receive tab in your wallet. Don't ever just copy an address from a block explorer and use that. Even if you think you are using the right one, it is just too easy to accidentally copy the wrong address. Now I'll just run through some of the common ways that I've seen scammers using block explorers. Now the first and most basic thing that I've seen is when scammers will essentially just send someone a link to this page and say, this is your wallet, I've set it up for you. And then a newbie will essentially send funds to this wallet address and then get all excited because they'll see the amount of funds increasing over time. Then the scam will say something like, oh, hey, you know, you need to add more funds, you'll get more returns and so on and so forth. And this all just keeps going on until at some point someone decides they want to withdraw some funds and then they realize they can't. They're like, you know, how do I withdraw funds from this wallet? When they put it into things like MetaMask, it's watch only or something like this. And the sad reality is that you can't. Unless you set up your wallet yourself, you cannot access those funds. The other thing that I've seen is when you'll have sort of a fake block explorer set up by a scammer, uh, they might also customize links like this one that add the network information directly to your browser. This information here will actually have been compromised. And basically what they can do is do something like change the network name and change the currency symbol. So now what I've got is I've got another account in here that says Ethereum. It actually has pulled the Ethereum symbol from there, it's not giving me a dollar counter value. And it says that I have 2.6 ETH. And basically all that's showing me is what my balance is on the, the HECO chain, but it's calling it ETH. So how the scam then works is the scammer picks the person into setting up their wallet like this, sends them some random token that they say is, you know, real Ethereum or something like that, that MetaMask will show. And the giveaway for this is if you go onto the actual Ethereum block explorer, just, you know, ether scan and stick your wallet address in, you can see that the balance is not uh, 2.6 ETH, but it is in fact, you know, 0 0.03. The single most powerful thing with these block explorers is it allows you to double check the balance that your wallet is showing you because your wallet can lie, especially if you followed some sort of scammy tutorial or instructions from a scammer about how to set it up. So there you go. It's a pretty straightforward concept once you get your head around it. But again, they're really powerful tools to help you to understand what's going on, uh, both within your wallet and especially how these different blockchains all interact together. The explosion of the number of Ethereum compatible chains that has happened over the last 18 months has made it easier than ever to lose funds, you know, accidentally sending to the wrong chain or something like that. But at the same time, some great multi-chain block explorer tools have come out. And the great thing about this is most of them share exactly the same interface. So once you understand how one of them works, it is easy to apply that information to another chain, making it much easier to locate and recover your funds. If you have sent some funds to the wrong address and are struggling to locate them, you know, just leave a reply in the comments I do my best to reply to everything. And if you're totally, totally stuck, you can also request a sort of paid consultation or trusted recovery. And there's information about that on my website.
Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.